with the 2022 Formula 1 regulations, there are aspects of these cars' aerodynamics that are throwing up some surprises. The front wings were thought to be rather conventional and restricted, so just a matter of load distribution. Therefore, there was only one question. Is the wings loading inboard near the nose or outboard? For aesthetic purposes, the wings are blended continuously into the end plates. Similar to most other parts of the car, they fit into a regulation box with maximum angles and radiuses to restrict development. This has seen either an inwash or outwash end plate, with either an upwash or sinusoidal dive plane extension. There is a particular focus here on the end plate, because of a visible vortex coming off the tip of the end plate. It's unusual due to the fact that it can be seen in low humidity. Typically these vortices off the wings need it to be wet to be seen. So this video will be describing how a vortex can be seen with a description of how flow is visualized in different contexts. This should aid the explanation of how the vortex is visualized in both high and low humidity environments. A vortex is just a rotating air structure coming off any two surfaces that are creating lift through pressure gradients. Wing theory describes them as a result of the line lifting method where the circulation of the wing is calculated and a vortex is a product of the finite wing. This method was useful for basic computational resources, like paper and pen. Now, however, the Euler or Navier-Stokes equation is a preferred method with the aid of greater computational power. Then a wing's resultant flow field can be dissected in three dimensions through plane slices, and rotating air masses can be visually extracted using a Lambda 2 method, among others. Theoretical approach was developed with the intention of providing a method for testing and developing aerodynamic shapes without the expense of wind tunnels. The trade-off is that the numerical models have a reduced accuracy or require computational resources just as expensive as wind tunnels. Wind tunnels have the obvious benefit of using actual air, though still with limits. Apart from the expense, these are rolling roads, scaling, and visualizing the flow structure around the vehicle. The flow over the body isn't difficult to visualize. Just taping wool tufts to the surface is a common method. Beyond the surface, particle image velocimetry, or PIV, has been employed to lend computational resources to flow visualization. There are an endless number of ways this method can be used, but they are all based on the idea of a camera imaging microparticles or bubbles suspended in airflow. Capturing these images over time intervals inferences the path of a particle over a time period and therefore its velocity and therefore pressure can be calculated. The biggest problem with this method is that air cannot be always seen under or in the vehicle. That is the problem when the floor is the major downforce creating component of the car. But saying this, with the size of cameras today and the use of light curtains, I suspect this problem is solvable. Ideally full-size car models would be run in wind tunnels. This is rarely the case, as wind tunnels that size are remarkably expensive. Formula 1 thus restricts the size of the model, and therefore the benefits of using large tunnels. The only way a real and full-size car can be tested is on track, or at least outdoors. This trades the cost of the tunnel with the cost of the part development, as each aero part is bigger and more costly, and more closely matches the end product with weight and strength considerations. Not to mention the consistency of the controlled environment with the visual techniques for analyzing the flow field. Using FlowViz paint and a kill tube rakes are typical during testing or practice, but these are usually meant for correlation rather than direct analysis. This background on airflow interpretation gives a little context as to how different methods of flow visualization can be achieved and how context is important. The different vortex visualization from last year's to this year's cars can be interpreted in a similar way. In this case, the context is physics. First, the wispy vortex. These are what have been typically seen before, coming from the rear wings or the inner front wing discontinuities at 250 mm from the center line, hence the name Y250 vortex. These collections of imagery also show the physics. Starting early, there is a thin band of condensation caused by the lowering temperature of the air below the dew point. The cause is the lowering pressure due to the forces associated with the rotating air mass. The lowering of the air pressure also lowers the dew point. It's just the dew point can be reached despite this. It also explains why these vortices need particular conditions to occur, cold and wet. The actual mechanism for lowering the pressure of the vortex core 
is seen in the latter part of the vortex trail where the micro water droplets form a ring. The centrifugal force spins the water droplets out to the side of the vortex. I like analogizing it with the stirring of a drink, where the fluid of the inner surface of the drink has its pressure lowered by the motion and the atmosphere pushes down. The cup serves as high pressure over the atmosphere, holding the rotating mass together, thus forming the flow structure bounded by the cup. By the end of the vortex trail, the micro droplets have become relatively big and heavy and spun out to the edge of the vortex, up the pressure gradient. This is all before the vortex collapses and the pressure gradient disperses along with the micro water droplets. It's worth mentioning that the optical mechanism for seeing this vortex is something called mere scattering. This is the same electromagnetic mechanism for seeing clouds, where the water droplets are around the size of the wavelength of light. This radiates the light out from the water droplets, scattering it into a vague whiteness. Y250 vortex seen at the same time as the rear wing vortices don't share the same nice clean boundary. They are just a lot bigger and messier. Created by the multi-element front wings, each element generally contributes to the momentum of the vortex structure. This vortex became a hugely important flow structure, with elements like the bargeboard winglet arrays contributing to its flow, pulling and pushing it to favourably influence the downstream part of the car, usually the floor. Now the 2022 cars. To aid with the analysis, I use CFD with a standard steady state simple method to give a bit more insight into what might be going on with the unusual vortex visualization. Previous explanations around what has been seen before doesn't work here. I created eight different end plate configurations for the simulation, each representing something a team has run this year or serves as a comparison to break down the mechanism. These vortexes are obviously created by the end plate, and they continue around the side of the wheel. They appear well defined and similar to the mentioned rear wing vortex, which they should as they were created by the end plate itself. They appear independent on which way the end plate is sloped, that is inwards like the Mercedes, or outwards like everybody else. Most importantly, they're transparent. From the simulations, the inward sloped end plate interacts more with the wing and wheel, producing a larger vortex. These are all used in the same lambda 2 value for the ISO volume. This suggests that the higher downforce would increase the likelihood of the vortex visualization for the Mercedes and reduce it for everybody else. Conversely, its appearance on the Aston Martin at Monza makes sense. I extracted the data from the surface of the ISO volume along a plane and plotted the position in space to give a sense of the geometry of these vortices. Their roundness is important, and these are round. Apparent is the inward end plate vortex being higher and wider. F7 is the Mercedes with the loophole end plate. The images from the screenshots make it difficult to discern the diameter. I screenshot the Aston at Monza for the best resolution of the images. From these images, the vortex seems to be a bit wider. I suspect my tire model is smoother and therefore has a lower high pressure field in front of it. Likely because of the texture. Texture matters in these cases. So much so, there is one theory that the Mercedes suffered more from porpoising initially was because their wind tunnel rolling road is a bit smoother, inhibiting wind tunnel and reality correlations. Anyway, showing that these vortices exist and can be replicated in simulations, the likely cause of the visualization is the cause pressure temperature, therefore its density. The fact that we're looking long ways along the core surely matters. Primarily, this is an optical effect. Light travels through less dense matter faster. The physics is light as an electromagnetic phenomenon that will change direction at the interface between materials with different permittivity. You can play follow the equation and derive how this occurs and then extrapolate with the varying permittivity that makes up metamaterials. It is with these vortices they form a metamaterial of sorts. Due to the centrifugal force caused by the rotating air, a density gradient is maintained in space and time. As these cars travel towards us, the distorted and noisy background is bent. It is similar to creating a Schlieren effect for imaging phenomena outdoors. Initially, the Schlieren effect was used in laboratory environments with mirrors and pin light sources. Great for things moving at lab speed, 
However, a noisy environment can be used in combination with the particle image velocimetry software that is the same used in wind tunnels. The issues with this is the background needs to be still, but I suggest a moving background can be compensated using software. If it couldn't, we wouldn't be able to see these vortex distortions from the cars. Now to confirm that this is the physics we are seeing, with the vortex core being less dense, the light from below should be bent up, lifted into a high position in space, and vice versa. And from these sequences of images, that is what I suggest we are seeing here. Then if I thought that we can see this here, there are other places in the car we could see this phenomena. The only place it is obvious is from a small flow off the wing mirror, due to the green bull's not so unique design. Without putting much effort in, I tried to find it on previous year's cars. The closest hint that I got was here, of this Ferrari rear wing, made possible by the noisy background. I bet there are other, better examples to be found. For the three people still watching, I also got the results from each of these simulations. It appears that this very high downforce front wing is better if it had the red bull end plates. Placing it on the car broke everything downstream. Not giving a large overall performance gain, but there was at least some. It shifted the centre of pressure forward to almost 50-50, so I'll dial that back a little, or a lot. 